Hey guys, so if you want to check out the makeup look from um, today, then it will be up on Monday. Um, but today I'm going to be answering some of your questions that you guys sent me on Twitter. And I did actually do this like two weeks ago. Um, but my camera skills weren't that good and everything was out of focus. So I've had to redo it. Um, and as you might tell, I've actually been really ill recently. Um, I've had like the flu and it's been horrible. Um, I've kind of like, I don't know, my voice is kind of coming back now, but I did lose it at one point. Um, so I'm going to look at these questions. Okay, so I'm going to answer some of these questions. Do -do -do. My first one is from Ellen at Fabre Ellen. And she said, what's your favourite vegan food? Hmm, my favourite vegan food is probably vegan mac and cheese, because I just love mac and cheese. Or vegan pizza. Basically the same things that my favourite, like, before I became vegan. Um, anyway, someone else, Bethany Cornelius at Bethany C underscore X has asked what eyeliner do you use? Do you have a preference, gel, liquid or pencil? I tend to use gel. Um, I use my gel one from Illamasqua. It's like a little pot and then I use like a little brush um, to draw it on because I find that it can be a lot more precise or um, actually for this eyeliner I used um, a what was it? It was a liquid pen from Ico, which can also be really good. Um, next question. <laughs> Some of these are ridiculous, like as if. Um, oh, okay, one from Natalie Kegel at Natalie Kegel. Do you wear leather? If not, where's the best place to buy faux leather? So, when I first became vegan in January, I still wore leather because I thought that it was like a byproduct um, and that the animals were being killed for their meat so they were just using the leftovers but after speaking with Peter I found out that actually um, leather is just as bad as meat you just can't differentiate between what the cows are being killed for these days like it could be leather it could be meat but um, I think it's all kind of the same now and um, it's it's in huge demand so how can you tell whether it was like a leftover product or whether the cow was killed specifically for that? And after figuring that out and learning that, I was like, oh my god, I look at leather in a completely different way. And I have all these like amazing handbags that I've like worked hard to buy. And um, my car had leather seats. So, and I got that in January as well. So I was like, oh my god, what am I going to do? I can't just get rid of my car. Um, but recently I started getting rid of all my leather bags, so like all my designer bags, my leather jackets. I don't really have any leather like left in my house, I'm just looking around. No, it's all faux. Um, if I see something, if I come across it and it's leather, then I put it on my Depop. Um, it's like this like online car boot sale and um, I use that to sell like all my things that I don't want anymore and half the money goes to a charity for the RSPCA so if you look at that then you might find some really good deals and some designer bags um, I also got rid of my car because every time I was getting into it I was like it smells like dead cow and it's horrible and it was just like bad karma and I was just like I didn't want to be kind of, I, I loved my car and I, was, I thought, you know, it looks amazing and it's really cool and I've always dreamed of having a really cool, like, sports car, whatever. And um, I just kind of thought, you know what, I know it looks cool, but it's, it's tainted. It's tainted with death. So I don't wear leather anymore and I don't buy leather anymore. So um, you can buy a lot of faux leather from places like high street brands like myself fridge river island all those places they do faux leather shoes faux leather jackets um bags you can buy from charles and keith which is a really good vegan bag brand um or skinny dip actually do some really cool um faux leather bags um yeah. 
Someone said, okay, Holly Moore, at Holly Moore 06, has said, what do you feed your dog meat? Um, so, again, this is another thing that I've struggled with because I have a dog and a cat, and obviously in their natural habitat, they would be carnivores, and they would live off dead animals, um, and they'd have to, you know, kill their own food. Um, but... I've always fed them dry food, which I think has like meat in it, organic Lily's food. Um, but recently I re did loads of research about it and I was like, basically I was looking at my dog and I was like, I just don't want you to die ever. I love you so much. I just like, I want you to be alive forever. And I thought, how can I make sure that he lives as long as possible? So I looked up online and I was like, what's the best food that you can feed your dog? And it said that basically the best foods that you can feed your animals is like home cooked food so recently I've started cooking my dog um, like basically I give him what I eat so I'll give him like broccoli, carrots, sweet potato mix him with rice, um, I like to put some like olive oil in there for him and I don't feed him meat, no, well I feed him fish so I've been buying these like tinned organic sardines which I just like, it makes me really upset but like I get really worried that if I don't feed him meat or fish or whatever or something like that because that, he's a carnivore that he wouldn't be able to survive as long whereas like obviously humans are omnivores so we can live off either diet, we can live off meat or we can live off plants which is like really amazing. But um, my cat is so fussy, he literally, he doesn't eat anything that I cook, he's just like, ew, what is this? Um, and he's been like that since he was a kitten. So I feed him dry food, and I feed him the sardines as well, and he eats that. Um, the dry food is um, biscuits, and it's not got any meat in it, it's just fish, and it's all organic. Um, so I don't know. It's a really tricky subject. I'd love to know what people think about it. So can you please comment below because I'm like, I don't want to be a hypocrite. But also I don't want my pets to like die. And I just like want the best for them. Not that they'll die, but like I don't want them to be unhealthy. So please let me know what you think about that because it's a tricky one. Um, someone Halloween at Hez RT Shaped Box what breed is Digby? So Digby is over there. Digby. Hey. Hi. Hi baby. Hi. He was having a little sleep. Um, Digby is a German Spitz Klein and I never knew what that was before but when I saw him he was actually in a shop and it was really bad. Um, I got him when I was like 21. I didn't really know that like buying puppies from shops was really bad. But he'd been there for five months. And I felt so bad for him. I kept seeing him there. I was like, why is he still here? So I I just like, he was really annoying and yappy. But I was just like, I have to get him. I have to like rescue him. I had no idea what a German Spitz climb was. But I was like, that is the cutest thing I've ever seen in my life. Um, and I feel like I rescued him. But um, he was all like reduced in price and everything, which is so savage. But um, I don't think they sell puppies there anymore, which is good. Um, and I would never buy a puppy or a cat or anything like that. I rescued my cat from Battersea. I'd always rescue animals now because I don't want to like feed the industry. Um, but yeah, he's a German Spitz Klein. And another one, Shaminda at Shaminda Sahota. Will you be making a fashion slash makeup slash recipe book? I have got a few things coming up that I'm really excited about. Um, I can't tell you exactly what, but a couple of those things might be happening. So, watch this space. I feel like I say that all the time. Watch this space. Watch this space. Like, it just loses its mysterious vibe if you say it, like, every five seconds. Um, Molly hyphen olivia at molly underscore anson what is your favorite place that you've ever been to what does that mean is it like favorite place like favorite restaurant or like favorite country or favorite i don't know favorite place but so many places um my favorite restaurant is fed it's called fed by water it's in dalston 
and when I became vegan I just like missed out on so much Italian food and I was like oh my god what am I going to do without pizza and macaroni and cheese and like pasta and garlic bread and all these things and then I found out about this place called Fed by Water and I was like okay can't be that amazing like come on like realistically it's not going to be the same and oh my god the food there is like the best ever and it's all vegan pizza pasta carbonara like I was eating this carbonara and I was like I spat it out because I thought it had bacon in it and I like got the waitress and I was like oh my god I was like there's bacon in my food and she was like no this is a vegan restaurant I was like yeah but I think I think you made a mistake and she was like no it's seitan I was like I hadn't heard of seitan before and I was like oh my god it tastes exactly like meat this is scary but yeah, the food is amazing there, so really, I do suggest going there. And then my favourite country is probably Australia, because all my well, a lot of my family live there, and it's kind of like England, but like hot and with beaches that are warm, and it's really healthy there. A lot of vegan people in like Sydney and places, and like lots of vegan restaurants, which is really cool. And it's just like chilled out. I just love it in Australia. So far away though really upsetting. Um, Holly Emerson at H-L-E-X-O underscore experience of living with and dating someone who is non-vegan and hope you would, wait, hope for him to change to veggie vegan in the future. I'm guessing she means James. Um, it's a really tricky one because, oh, yeah, it is hard sometimes, like, dating someone that eats meat is, it's like, because it's like the thing that I preach about most is not eating meat and trying to encourage people not to and then obviously I live with someone and I'm in love with someone that eats meat and it is hard because it's like I don't know it's tricky but I think it's like our only thing really that we argue about ever um, and it's like his only flaw but then there's just so many people in the world that still eat meat and I can't like be annoyed at him because it's just something that people are used to like they just you know if everyone in England or whatever or relatives all ate dogs we'd find it normal to eat dogs I mean I personally wouldn't because I'm just against animal eating in general but a lot of people would because they'd be like this is what we've done our whole lives and um you know that's what happens in Asia and it's just about kind of like people adjusting and I think it's harder for some people um, but yeah ideally yeah he, he wouldn't eat me um, but it's up to him what he does and I have to accept that so another one about James uh, Sasha Canning at Bash 1990 do you and James have to eat separate meals and any recipe ideas for a fussy vegan Yes, we do. Sometimes I'll be cooking a vegan meal and I'll cook some for him too and then he'll just like add chicken. Um, or he'll just cook his own meal and I'll cook my own meal. But it doesn't really affect us that much. Like, he doesn't have a lot of, we don't have a lot of meat in the house and not really any dairy. So we share like almond milk and um, vegan butter and like all those things. He eats a lot of my vegan protein as well. Um, vegan, fussy vegan idea, uh, recipe ideas. I don't know what you like, so that's really hard, but try and look at my last video that I did, which says some like recipe ideas. I'm quite fussy. Um, so that shows some like foods that are good to eat. So if you look at that one, that could help you. This is a really weird question. Richard B at Jelly12P. If karma was coming back to you, would it help you or hurt you and why? With a smiley face. Um, I don't know. Karma haunts me. I'm like constantly thinking about karma. I'm always like, oh my god, I have such a big conscience basically. Um, this one time, actually no, I can't tell this story because it's just too savage. Can I? I will. This one time ages ago I was in a rush and I was going to, um, I think it was filming and I was getting a taxi and there was this like old woman and she was like, can I share your taxi? I need to go to the post office. And I was, I had no idea who she was. 
And I was like, I'm sorry, and like, no, I'm in a rush, and the post office is not on the way, so I'm sorry, but I can't help you. And I just like left, and I felt so bad. I was like, oh my god, I'm such a bitch. I've just like ditched this old woman, and then I think um, something happened to me later that day, and I was like, I know why, because I didn't help her. So yeah, I do karma is a big thing, but I don't think I have any bad karma coming my way anytime soon. I'm hoping for just good karma right now because I don't haven't done anything wrong or anything like that. Um, okay. Lily Baker Harbour at Lily Baker Harbour. Opinion on the use of fur for fashion. What are your favourite faux fur pieces? I completely disagree with fur being used for fashion. I think it's disgusting. Um, I've done an anti-fur campaign for Peter, and um, I have to say, if you look up the videos of how they get the fur, they literally farm animals and, and like breed like foxes and all these things so that they can just rip their skin off them and make a fur coat. And they rip it off while they're alive, like it's savage, they're just like so tortured. Um, and I just think, you know what, faux fur is so great these days and it looks exactly like fur and it feels amazing. Why the frig would you want to wear a dead animal when you could wear, like, this amazing, comfy, gorgeous faux fur? And so many high street brands do faux fur, like, I can't name them all, but like Top, Sh well, Top Shop, River Island, all the, you know, Smith Selfridge, pretty sure Whistles just does um, faux fur, Stella McCartney. Just like, faux fur is the way forward, I think. Um, another one from Lily. Have you tried to add more vegan options in your dad's pub restaurant business? Yeah, I have. I'm always on his case about it. Like the one pub that I really go to is the Feeney in Chelsea and that's like my favourite and they've completely changed the menu there. They've put loads of vegan options on there and loads of vegetarian options. So. That's really good, and yeah, I definitely have influenced that. But also I think he recognises the fact that it's a growing market and that, you know, it's a really healthy option for people and people are so health conscious in London and it's actually good to have on his menus. So, yeah, it's good. Um, Amor Nadine, at O Amor Nadine, what, how do you eat vegan when you travel? Um, it's quite hard actually when I travel because a lot of places aren't up to speed with the vegan situation uh, so you really have to just research where you're going and maybe call the hotel that you're going to in advance and just check that they can actually cater for vegans because I once went to a hotel in Ibiza and um, we told them that I was a vegan but when I arrived all I wanted was food so I ordered room service and they said they'd come up with something for me and they gave me a sandwich with mushroom and tomato and the mushroom was raw and it was awful but I ate it because I was so hungry but I was like, oh my god, this is not great so definitely tell them in advance and research where you're going book a hotel that caters for vegans because otherwise you're just going to be screwed Gonna search for this thing. Ask at least me. Oh yeah, here's another one. Laura at Valley Electra. If you have kids, will they be raised vegan? Yeah, they will. I mean, come on. I'm not gonna have kids and feed them meat or dairy. Like, just would never do that. It's like the most hypocritical thing ever but yeah obviously I'm dating a meat eater so if it happens to be the one that I have children with it could be I've, I've said to him actually I've said like I would ha I would always have vegan kids um, and I think that by the time I have children it'll be a long way off because I'm only 25 and I'm like quite traditional about things like that and I think that I want to live my life before I have kids um, but I would probably I think it would be a lot more um, acceptable by the time I do it and there'll be a lot more like options around and there'll be a lot more vegan kids around and you know the next generation is really who we're relying on to save this planet so I'm hoping there'll be more vegans by then so yeah vegan kids let me see what else
Georgia at It's Georgia Coop. After leaving Maiden Chelsea, what are your plans for the next year? So, I have a lot of plans. Um, I am going to be doing a lot more charity work with animal charities and kind of raising awareness and things like that. Um, but I'm also working towards a few other business ideas which I can't disclose right now. Um, but you'll be finding out by the end of this year what they are and I've been working really hard on them for a long time so um, yeah you have to wait to find that out but also working on my jewellery line which I love um, I've got a few other ideas that I haven't yet started on but I'm gonna definitely try and I'm basically really busy so I have a lot going on to do with animal related stuff and trying to sort of like prevent animal cruelty. So yeah, just doing stuff that I really care about. And um, I hope that I will get back into TV. I'm having a break for now just because I've been doing it solidly for like four years, but it is my passion. And I would like to get into like documentaries or something or who knows, but it's definitely something I'm gonna go back to. So we shall see. But thank you so much for all your questions, guys. Um, I've really appreciated it. And I hope that I've answered most of them. And, um, yeah. Sorry that I've been gone for a while. Please make sure you subscribe. I will try and not get ill again and lose my voice. Um, and I'm sorry that my voice is, like, a little bit croaky and annoying. It's, like, nothing I can do about it. So, yeah. But have a good week, and I will see you again on Monday.